Aloha and welcome. I'm Cindy Palos here with Alon Batal. And I've had a chance to speak to Alon and his art world, and it's a marvelous world, a few times through the years. And I am so excited because now I'm in his showcase. I've always wanted to be in your showcase, Alon. <laughs> 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 I've made it to Alon's showcase. It's a brand new showcase here in Lahaina. And I just love speaking to Alon. He's one of the most fascinating artists just a brilliant, brilliant artist, and um, just one of those people you can speak to, and you know that this energy, this this is vital energy, this life force exudes from him and his art, and it's just so inspiring and so beautiful. So it's really a pleasure to be here with you, Alon, and I want to congratulate you. We've got Lays on. Oh, thank you. In congratulation of your new showcase here in Lahaina. Yay. So I guess we'll start with the fact a lot of people may not know your background. I have just been enthralled mm -hmm. by your background because I find it a very interesting story, the fact that you began at a very young age, being inspired at a young age, but not quite knowing where you were going to put that direction. You were, when you were younger, in an entirely different field, very different field. I mean, if they could have seen him now. Versus, <laughs> I mean, it's like what people have ever guessed when you were younger and working with in the kind of high-tech world at a very young age. I mean, what a difference from then to now. T give us a little background what you were doing in an early age. Well, basically, Cindy, what I was doing was uh, what you mean when I, after I um, got out of school, I went to work for IBM Corporation and worked with them for a, you know a few years in diagnostics. And um, at that time, when I was growing up, being an engineer was uh, the thing to do. And you know, there's a lot of things that are open to us, but of course, um, one of my main people, Leonardo da Vinci, was an engineer as well as an artist, physician. Uh, but in today's world, we don't get a chance to be the Renaissance man if we go out to get a job. We have to take. So I, I, I got my first position in, in IBM and used to repair computers for them. In the early days, I mean, my gosh, that was before the whole big... 1963, uh, 64, 65. What was a turning point in your career where that all changed and you felt like a, the new direction was coming? Can you give us, like, was there a pivotal point that was a key point for you? Oh, sure. Actually, I think that was right after I dropped out of engineering, after being in the corporate world working for ITT. and. I joined the commune on the Lower East Side, uh, and <laughs> I, <laughs> during the hippie years, you know, in '67, uh -huh. and uh, did psychedelic lighting uh, with my engineering knowledge, and did did a lot of work with Andy Warhol, and created the first psychedelic discotheque in New York City. Oh, uh, that must have been wild. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a lot of fun. It was a wild time for anybody at the time, and even wilder for us at the time. And uh, uh, you know, it, it was it, no one had ever seen psychedelic lighting before, and you know, it really took off, as you well know. And it was an all just went worldwide. Mm -hmm. So it was quite intriguing. Did you get inspired by Andy to in, when you saw started getting hung around with the art world? Were you getting inspired by the artists at that point? Well, basically, I wasn't friends with Andy. I was really a, a, a business associate, so to speak. I was. A, he came to me, saw me, uh, did, and he was very taken by uh, my uh, uh, designs and lighting, and said, "I I have an idea. You you know maybe we could." do this discotheque and <laughs> you know I said great so he put up the money and uh -huh. we and I did it you wow. know and uh, it was a great success and uh, uh, Velvet Underground played there <laughs> and you know and then I did a number of other um, uh, we converted bowling alleys my commune and I you know I was a chief engineer designer and uh, so we did that and put the money back into it to form uh, uh, our community uh, and bring Swami Satchidananda to the country from form the help form the Integral Yoga Institute, which now is worldwide. Uh, I didn't know who he was at the time, but you know the people in my commune did, and they they swore by him. I said, okay, great, you know, and I was having fun. I dropped out of you know the straight business computer world, and you know 
Summer of Love. That is amazing. Yeah. And you, with your art, really have an amazing sense of light and color. Thank There's you. a luminescence. There is a vitality. <laughs> and there is this life yeah. force yeah. in the colors and the way you bring yes. these colors yes. are just magical, the way they come to light. I mean, I just look at these and it's like this depth upon depth and worlds upon worlds of the colors here, which make your pieces so very, very special. Thank you. But you know, we, I look at this and I think, boy, how many layers of colors and what does it take to create something of this depth to give it that kind of world of color? Well, it's, it, it, it's simple in the explanation. I plagiarize nature in the production of gemstones. Gemstones are so unusual in the fact that they have a great depth of color. There are no gemstones whose color is on the surface. All gemstone color requires light to go into the body of the gem beyond the surface and deep into it and come back to the eye. So light is processed through layers. So understanding that I had to get a crystal clear medium that would allow the light to pass into it in the same way that gemstones do. So I found this aerospace enamel on the wings of high flying jet craft that protects the wings and it's crystal clear with no color and I shop the world to get pigments which are colorful chemicals and jewels and things of that nature that are crushed. Lapis lazuli made royal purple and all those. So then I put that in my medium and layer it to create a thickness that would allow light to go into it just like a gemstone does and come back to your eye. That's the essence of the radiance of gems and that's the essence of the radiance of my work. When you're in different realms of light, the light of Maui is very special light, very interesting, and you are in your own life in different realms of light as you go through different thoughts and processes. Right. Does your work reflect this energy of light and where you are and your state of mind in, in your work? Of course. Uh, we all are affected by our surroundings and Maui is particularly luminescent and it, and in the sense that it's really beautiful and there's the light that is here, the colors that are here are more brilliant than most places, tropical, semi-tropical places have incredible colors. E even our flowers that we see, our commonplace flowers uh, all throughout the, the island are extraordinary. You know, commonplace flowers that are extraordinary. Of course our fish, our tropical fish, exhibit some of the colors of uh, of gemstones too, the flash of a fish flying through the air, you know, uh, even the food, the fish that we eat at the supermarket are like little works of art. I mean, if you just s go to the supermarket and look at, our, at, at the fish on display, they're beautiful, you know. So we have, that's the reason why there's so many artists on this island, because we seek beauty, we seek to replicate its beauty, we seek to put it in a place where it is less fugitive, it'll last. And of course, that's why we, do, one of the reasons why we do are to express ourselves, but to reprocess that beauty in a sense that it can be kept inside your home. This beauty that you have really reflects a very high inner world for you as well. You try to get to a place inside where you know that your service is through your work. And this is how you are as an artist, trying to bring what you feel in your highest self through in your work. So yes. are you constantly kind of trying to bring and communicate that, that essence of what you are out through your work? Again, another good question. I think what I'm, I know what I'm trying to do, or doing rather, is not trying to process myself. I'm in, uh, in perfect being, but what I do process and what I do process is more perfect than I am. Um, I'm blessed to be able to receive the power that comes through me from another place. And that is really what I endeavor to do. Uh, it's passed through the sieve of, you know, purification before it goes out to the world. Uh, in my own being, it's not, uh, it's not as pure because I'm not, I'm more direct. I'm without that that secondary position of, 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 of being cleansed by, by an intermediary. And also, 
the energy that passes through me is much more intelligent and more wise than I am. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about that before, how many genius works have been produced by fools. And, and even mafiosas, you know, and even people who are, you know, odd, you know, in their own ways. However, they've been blessed with the talent to pass it through them. Mm -hmm. And um, we just operate that way. We feel that we have to do it. Uh, and uh, we are driven very often by it, maybe because it's our strongest points. Mm -hmm. Some people might <laughs> say that um, um, you have had a chance to maybe even be driven. You started on Maui years ago. You created a whale, of a whale of a whale in Kihei. You did many wonderful things. You had a little gallery, but then decided to take on something people would have considered almost insane, a huge gallery in Mako, a massive gallery. And you went into it more than 100%, 110%. And you went at it when people said you were a fool, you were crazy. No one spends that kind of money. And you went and you were successful. And they didn't even think you'd make it through the first year. And now, another gallery here. And you have another gallery where your works are displayed in, um, the, in Seattle, Seattle area. Yes. And even plans for the future. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have something in you that's driving you to continue to not judge your standards by other